Amidst many of us working from home over the past several months, the importance of the chief human resource officers at companies is really grown. They have been more public facing. They have been addressing employees more frequently. Someone who is watching this trend closely is someone who is watching the wellness trend overall closely and self-care trend closely. That's Ariana Huffington. She is Thrive Global's founder and CEO. She's joining us from Los Angeles. And Ariana, you wrote about this phenomenon of these chief human resource officers growing in importance. Um, talk to us about whether, the, I mean, it seems like this is a fairly recent change and one that really was pushed forward by what we've seen over the past couple months. Uh, absolutely. You know, we've been working with um, CHROs for four years now since Thrive Global was founded. And so it's really dramatic to see the change with many of the big companies and smaller companies we are working with. As you know, in big moments in a company's history, normally the CEO would be together with the CFO making announcements. Now the CEO is with the CHRO. Uh, Verizon, for example, the CEO who the CHRO have um, daily um, all hands. Uh, Ellen Shook, the CHRO of Accenture, is uh, constantly now um, working with the global management team on decisions. The same at Cisco, the same at Walmart, everywhere. And it's a very interesting phenomenon because the topics that um, HR leaders deal with the health and wellness of employees and now, of course, uh, the culture of belonging and inclusion is paramount, are at the forefront of the CEO agenda. So that has elevated what the CHROs do and things that they have worked with in the past are now moved from the periphery to the center. Mariana, I heard you speak in 2016 in New Rochelle, New York, and it was about getting enough sleep. And I'm, I'm serious when I ask you this. How much of that is part of the message that Thrive wants the, the C-suite officials who manage us to spread that message as part of the overall well-being as we do our jobs? Well, we work with many of these companies through our behavior change up to help people get more sleep. Um, move more, have healthier mental thoughts, because of course here we see the rise of anxiety and uh, depression and fear that are affecting our sleep and everything is in interconnected. So that's really what we are saying. If you want to deal with sleep, you also need to deal with nutrition and with uh, movement and with mental habits. And uh, point solutions don't really work. And that's what's changing also in how CHROs approach benefits, you know, offering a benefit, checking the box, and then paying depend, depending on utilization is not something that has produced real results. So we are focusing on how do you change behavior by looking at the whole human and everything that they are do, doing during the day through micro steps. You know, New Year resolutions don't work. Micro steps work, small daily incremental steps that we call too small to fail that can lead to healthier habits. And of course, sleep is paramount now because it's so central to our physical immunity as well as our mental resilience. Hi, it's Brian Chung. I wanted to ask specifically about some of the more marginalized groups, those that have been disproportionately affected, especially by the COVID-19 trends, forcing people to work from home. Uh, women being one example, they've been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. And uh, I think childcare is something that a lot of people have questions about, even when the recovery does come, if women are still being required to work from home and they have to deal with kids at the same time. I imagine there's a lot of questions for human resource officers about what types of benefits companies might offer. I'm wondering, are there examples of successful policies that you've seen or kind of conceptual approaches to dealing with that question, which I'm sure is going to only grow in scale over the next couple months? Absolutely, Brian. You know, on, women have been particularly affected by COVID-19. When you have um, two um, career families, both working from home with young children, again, um, the load falls disproportionately on the women. And of course, with childcare uh, not being largely available right now, that has put 
front and center the problems that we already entered the pandemic with in terms of women carrying um, the mental load of taking care of children, even when uh, fathers or the other um, spouse, uh, the other parent is more involved. So um, this is also related now to the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on um, African-Americans. Um, we've seen that they entered the pandemic with a lot of pre-existing conditions. And um, because also of the social determinants of health, the neighborhoods, um, they live in the uh, limited access to healthy food and all that, the pandemic has had a, a tragically disproportionate impact on them. Uh, Ariana, I want to ask you kind of changing topics to the, the current protests uh, and the calls for uh, police reform. And, you know, a lot of HR departments are reaching out to their employees, uh, basically, you know, saying, how can we help? And I, I've been, you know, seeing a lot of commentary saying, look, HR shouldn't, uh, you know, approach it in that way or, or should approach it in a way that's more comfortable and not say uh, to each employee, how are you feeling about this situation? Because, you know, people of color have had to deal with similar situations their entire lives. I guess, how do you recommend HR companies uh, or, or HR professionals rather respond uh, in, uh, I guess, to issues like this? Well, we have offered them um, a course with Verna Myers, who is a diversity and inclusion um, expert now at Netflix, that has a great um, recommendation regarding what she calls the platinum rule, which goes beyond the golden rule. Instead of just uh, um, treating someone as you would like to be treated, treating someone as they would like to be treated. And that uh, improves that quality of belonging um, that is essential for a thriving culture. So all those um, questions come up, not just in big abstract ideas, but the micro moments that uh, make or break a culture. And uh, at the same time, what we're seeing with many companies is employees being engaged in bringing about systemic change everywhere. Um, I mean, at Thrive, we celebrated, for example, the fact that in New York, finally, 50A, um, a law that was shielding disciplinary um, complaints um, against police, um, uh, was uh, repealed on uh, Wednesday. Uh, for five years, Assemblyman Michael Blake and others had tried to repeal it. The protests and um, the sense of uh, systemic injustice that have been dominant in the last two weeks is leading to legislative reform. So we see uh, companies and individuals within companies being really engaged in, in these uh, fundamental changes, not just within their companies, but around the country. Ariana, it's good to see you and thank you for your perspective on this. Ariana Huffington is the founder and CEO of Thrive Global. Thanks again. Thank you.